Um, if you are an aspiring YouTuber, you probably know that equipment costs a lot of money. However, today I'm going to show you a few good alternatives to this professional equipment that I'm personally using that don't cost nearly as much. I've been posting on YouTube for about three years now and I had to go through many troubles from how to get the camera positioned to how to edit my videos to everything else and I'm gonna lead you through the process of making a video and just give you some cheap alternatives. So let's get into it. Number one is background. You can use any kind of background that you have in your room this is just a blank wall and i could be using my plant corner right here but for this specific video i just wanted to focus on me very important thing is just to have a background that fits your style of videos if you just do talking head you can have a simple background with some things in the back that are more blurred or you can use a green screen i'm going to talk about that a little later the second most important thing is the lighting now what you don't see is that i actually have a ring light in my hands and this helps me because i have my room light on the ceiling you are currently standing on a ring light that i will also show you later and i have another one here that is just to add light from the bottom because if i just do this it's very bad and i just try to make better videos because the more light you give the easier it is for camera to make your video look better no matter how good the camera is the darker the situation you're recording the worst quality it kind of has if it's not the most professional thing ever but this light i got for christmas but i don't think it was over 50 euros and professional lights can cost you yeah, maybe hundreds of euros dollars whatever that you get those standing ones that are just high up and they just give you lighting from all the angles and i'm gonna show you the stand that you're currently on now you are on the ring light that i showed you before and this is the other one that i have this is a standing for my ring light and it's 180 centimeters tall i can go ahead and regulate the height manually and there is these legs that can extend and you just put it anywhere and this was the best purchase that i've made in a long time this cost me 65 euros and it's also a phone stand that obviously you can extend and just put your phone in there and it's a very good alternative also why was it six euros you might ask not just the fact that it's standing by itself because only that for a camera can cost you even hundreds of euros but we have all these amazing color changes plus we have this color changing thing that gets all these beautiful colors that you won't be able to see but it does all the color changing that can be really useful for some cool footage and it's very very good and definitely cheaper than let's say a camera stand oh my god don't fall obviously these alternatives are not going to be as perfect as the expensive things but they're gonna do their job well enough okay for camera I don't use an actual camera, those can be thousands, and I just use my phone, this one cost me about 250 euros, and it makes pretty good videos, and later in the editing I can make the videos 4K, just by sharpening the video and exporting it at 4K, I'm gonna talk about it later, but the thing is that I'm not using a camera and my videos are still quite fine, obviously the details can go very bad when you go in very long distances, uh, but when you do close-up videos it's kind of fine, especially with proper lighting this is why it's so important i went to edit yesterday's footage and i realized that i talked to a turned off camera so we have to redo this green screen part don't ask about the flag first of all there is many options you can use if you don't have a green screen but what i use is just i went to buy a few years ago this just green fabric and it's very bright green you don't see it on the camera but it's very bright and yellowy and i put it on this it's just a metal rod and then we have this is a clothes hanger okay and it's on these little oh it has these rolling things i put it like this on both sides and i drop down the green screen and that's just it this was very cheap because my dad got the pole for me and this was just the fabric cost which i don't think it was expensive and then these i got for free from a friend which i'm very thankful for because this makes things much much easier for me uh, there's also alternatives to green screen you can paint your wall green which isn't that expensive really because acrylic paint is pretty cheap at least in teddy uh, it's like a euro a bottle or you can get your ring light to have green light on the white wall behind you and you can essentially make it green now if you want to use some photos in the background of your videos you can either just go on google and just kind of risk 
having your background copyright infringed but the best thing is to take your own photos and just put them in the background or in CapCut there is a lot of pre-existing possible ones that you can use and it's quite fun to use now. With many editing programs you don't actually need to have a background because they can automatically cut you out and I'm gonna go into that a little later. You all will probably need some headphones at some point okay now obviously you can spend however much you want on headphones these were I think around 50 euros but you can also spend a few hundred on them okay they don't have to be professional obviously they're just good to have on when you're working on your video so the sound is you know you're just hearing everything correctly these are Sony WH something I'm not going to be linking things that I'm using because I get most of them from physical shops. However, you can definitely find some cheap headphones in your hardware, hardware store, in your technical products. I don't know how you call them in English, but very useful. I've had this for years and they have been the best Christmas gift ever. If this video was helpful in any way for you, think about subscribing. If only 10 of you do, this will already do better than most of my other videos and help me reach my long-term goal of 1,000 subscribers and help me monetize this channel, which would be an absolute dream. So for a lot of our videos, we're actually going to have to do some voiceover at some point. And many people will say you need a professional microphone for that. I personally don't use an actual professional microphone. This is what I'm using, okay? Laugh as much as you want. These are the original headphones that you get with your Samsung. I don't think you get them anymore, but they used to get them. And obviously this is a little microphone. And when you plug them in, it says audio recorded with external output. And this is actually really amazing. Now, the fluffy thing that usually microphones have is that you don't do this. <laughs> So what I use is just some polymer filling for plushies that I make and I just put it over the microphone and I can speak normally into it and it's actually a very good alternative and it makes a pretty well sounding sound. And this was free. Actual microphone can be anywhere from like 10 to like hundreds of euros. Again, you can go as high as you want. Anyone that has recorded videos before will tell you that you do need a lot of space to actually store all of them when they're still in their raw form. And of course, you're going to use some USB keys or SD cards. I keep them in my little box so I don't lose any because this is very important. I once lost an SD card and I lost 120 gigabytes of footage, which was a huge loss. I personally, since I recorded everything with my phone, I use this SanDisk key that is double sided so you can put one side in your phone so you can get your files from your phone to the key first and then you just turn around plug it into your computer and put the files through the key to your computer now, obviously you can transfer things with the cable from your phone but my phone is just so full that it's going to take forever and I'll crash my computer if I try to do that so I'd rather stick to USB keys I don't have one however I have maybe three or four. These are just some that I've been using. This middle one is the oldest one and it's 32 gigabytes. I recommend you to get anywhere from 128 gigabytes up because they're really good for a lot of storage. This one I only use to put my finished videos on and basically when I export the videos to YouTube and everything is done, I will just put the videos on this key and delete them from my computer so it doesn't just crash because it's too full. Definitely these are the key elements. One more fun thing to keep in mind is these Bluetooth shutters that basically you press on instead of pressing on your phone. These work Bluetooth, so you can just uh, connect them and just press to start recording. So you can go back and just record and that's just really good. You get these with these lights, so they are free. But obviously if you have a camera, you can buy those separately and they're gonna cost a lot of money, but essentially they do the exact same thing. They just click the button for you. Now for the editing part, you're going to need a computer. I uh, just have this, it's called a PC. I mean, it's a desktop. Uh, this is from Lenovo, Lenovo. I don't know how it's called in English, but yeah. And uh, obviously it's just a computer. This one was, I think, 500 euros. It's a good computer. My mom kind of said like, you can kind of keep it because she doesn't really use it for a lot of things, but we bought this in the word time now it's essentially a part of my everyday routine because this is where the magic happens the thing is you should invest in a computer because you can just use it for anything else you use a computer for however i did start posting videos from my phone and we're going to be using CapCut. Now, CapCut is a free app. This is not sponsored or anything, but I've been using it since I returned to YouTube from last April. I started on my phone and it's free and it still works fine. 
except that it just works much, much better on CapCut for PC. This makes the things way faster and way easier. You can just work on multiple clips at the same time. I really love it because it also exports the videos much faster on your computer than on your phone. But if you are really tight with the money, you can just start with your phone and see where this kind of leads you. And when you get a desktop, you can just work on this. Working on your computer, you also need a mouse. Uh, we have this one from Allogy and it has this really good, uh, very fast spinnable thing and very very quiet and i just love using this it can be usb or bluetooth you see there is a little usb key in there essentially just really good this was maybe 20 30 euros i think but you buy this when you get a computer now you might be thinking where do i find music that's not gonna get me copyright strikes well i use epidemic sounds and there's another one that I will put on the screen. I just screen record the actual music on their YouTube channel that I like and I just put it in my videos as a sound and yes, you're going to get a copyright notification. However, they don't influence the performance of your video at all. And even if you make money off of it, they don't take any. Another big cost with making videos is the programs being used for editing and making thumbnails. I use CapCut for all that and I actually make thumbnails on my phone. You can go into your app and there is a lot of options for making images. There is image enhancement that's currently free. There is background remover and it's very, very good unlike my phones there is just a ton of things that you can do and really you can make a really great thumbnail for free and get a cap cut for your phone get a cap cut for your computer and you're going to do everything in the app basically they're really really good and they are 100 free i don't use anything that I, I would have to pay for constantly if i buy something i'm just gonna use it a lot like a ring light and i'm just gonna have it for years cap cut 100 percent recommended if they ever sponsor me, that would be incredible. Charging cables, who doesn't love them? Absolutely no one loves them because they're annoying and they tangle up. However, you get most of your cables with the appliances that you buy. The thing you need to buy is only this part and you can get these in a lot of stores. Uh, we have Teddy here and you can get these for four euros each. You can also get cables for iPhones, uh, Samsungs, for anything really and you can get them pretty cheap. Obviously, they're not gonna work as perfect as the original ones, but they're cheap and they're gonna work for at least some time. And I'm personally using a few to put everything into the electricity and it's just working really well. Is there anything else? Is there literally anything else? I don't know, you know? I think this is everything. If I missed something, please put it down in the comments and tell me what you use as a substitute and I will see you in the next one. To be honest, this video was a little filler one because I really underestimated how much time I'm going to use for the actual crochet video for the week, but that's coming next week and I'll see you then. Goodbye. There goes my key.